Good morning and welcome to the seventh episode of the Molly Klein Design Podcast. My name is Molly and I will be your host. Today is Tuesday, April 17th. It is blistery cold, craziness, and I decided beautiful lighting today. I have a pile of goodies to show you. I haven't popped in in a few weeks. So I decided I was going to sit down this morning with a hot cup of delicious Earl Grey Lavender Twinings tea that my friend Jen sent me and sit down and talk to you about my recent makes and everything that's been going on. So my tea is in this beautiful Starbucks You Are Here mug, which is actually my first one. And it was a gift from my dear friend, Laura, of the Knit for Brains podcast. So thank you, Laura, and thank you, Jen, for sending me the tea. I'm usually a coffee drinker, but I had four cups of coffee, and it's not even noon yet. So I decided to cool it down a little bit and have some tea for a change. I am joined by Pearl, our rescue beagle mix and she is sitting on my feet so if she jumps up or makes any weird noises just remember there's a dog not me making those noises most likely um i wanted to thank everyone for all the sweet messages about pearl on my last podcast um i loved hearing all the stories about your rescue pets as well and she is just she's doing great she is hoping that the weather's going to be warmer just like I am. I once the weather broke a little bit we went on a few runs around the neighborhood and she spent a lot of time outdoors. Pearl does not like birds so if you open the sliding door and there is a poor little robin hopping around the yard or standing on the fence she just bolts for it. So my plans of a bird feeder and bird bath and some like hummingbird attracting plants, those are all out the window because those poor birds are going to be freaked out by this dog. So to save them a heart attack and me heartache, I'm going to put that plan to the wayside and we're just going to move forward with building our deck instead. And maybe I'll just have some sort of water feature or something in the corner that I had planned but no bird sanctuary because Pearl won't have it. So before I start, I just wanted to give a quick thank you to absolutely everyone that joined me at the Greencastle Indiana Fiber Fest this past weekend. It was my first time vending and it was the most fun I have literally ever had with my shop. I am an online shop owner, so I don't get to make, you know, color pairings for people in person or talk about patterns and stuff like that. It's all through texts or emails or Etsy messages. This was the first time I actually was able to sit down with the shoppers and talk about knitting and sitting with all my knitting friends and meeting so many of you. So you know who you are. I'll talk more about it later, but thank you so much to everyone that supported the Molly Klein Design booth. It was amazing and a big thank you to Jess of the Knits and Kids podcast, which you should check out. It's a wonderful podcast. She sat with me the entire first day. She helped me set up. She was the official yarn fluffer and we sat and knitted and laughed all day. And she, she was a rock star. So thank you again, Jess. You were so helpful and I appreciated you being there so much and Everyone that came to visit me it was just so much fun. I received so many wonderful gifts and I will show those later throughout the episode because a lot are already in use and as well as acquisitions. So I'm going to start off the episode with what am I wearing? Today it is freezing cold. It is in the early 30s. I'm just, I'm done with this weather. Um, I feel we are on our sixth month of winter. That is how it feels. And there are bulbs trying to make their way up and a little bit of flowering daffodils in my front yard that I planted last fall. I just hope these little plants don't freeze because I want 
spring. Um, but what I'm wearing, since it is still so cold out, I ran some errands already today. And this was so cozy and warm, I just didn't want to take it off when I got home. I am wearing my own pattern, the Fast Fade Cowl. And this is my most worn knitted item ever. I wear this every day with my coat and a lot of times just around the house just because it's so cozy and warm. It is knit out a it is knit out of a BU Fibers Zombie Love or Zombie Date Night Zombie Love mini skein set that she gifted me for my birthday a couple years ago. So it is beautiful, it is super soft, it is super warm, it goes with everything. I definitely need to make a couple more cowls because this is the only one that I have currently and I have a few more cowl designs in mind and honestly just using this as a basic pattern without the fading is beautiful too so I need to make a few more of these and as well as gifts because this is a super quick knit super warm um so yeah my first finished object is actually a new design. It is right here. And this is the Mondays at the library shawl. And it's actually a crocheted shawl using two colors of fingering weight. With a optional scalloped edge there is an option in the pattern where you can do a scalloped edge or a tasseled edge and I think if I make this again I'm going to do the tassel edge whoops so this is made out of BU fibers in her All American Summer colorway, as well as my Sweet Tea Yarns in the Happy Little Rain Cloud colorway, that is the blue. It is a very simple crochet design. So, if you are a knitter and the only crochet project you've ever attempted is the Granny Stripe blanket, then this is the pattern for you because this is the the stitches used in the granny stripe blanket are the stitches used in this shawl so it is no more difficult than going back and forth on a row on your scrappy sock blanket and it is available now on Ravelry so all you have to look up is the Mondays at the library shawl and it should pop up the reason that this is called Mondays at the library is Mondays at the library when I was 13 and 14 years old was when the crochet group would meet at the library. I, when I first started crafting, I started hand sewing when I was 10. So my grandma would show me how to like sew buttons on and I made a few, um, just like hand stitched. I made like little Barbie pillows and stuff like that. And then I went on to machine sewing so I started making quilts and quilt tops and that went to cross stitch and embroidery and my grandma's house has always been filled with like doilies and pretty lacy things and one day I picked up a doily and handed it to her and I said I want to learn to make one of these and she told me that she'd never learned how to crochet or knit but she would find out a way that I could so she was reading the paper and it was a kind of like a little advertisement or an ad letting people know that Mondays at the library the crochet group would meet at the Crown Point Indiana Library so I was homeschooled at that time and that was like our little field trips on Monday morning I would ride my bike to grandma's house it sounds like a 1950s film but we lived on a farm next to grandma's farm so I rode my bike to school every day and which took about 10 15 minutes because we both had my parents and grandma each had 25 acres at the time that was before we moved down here to indy and so i ride my bike to school and we would go to crown point to the library and i would crochet with the ladies and then come back and i would do my schoolwork then that's the nice thing about 
homeschooling is you can put your schoolwork around if you know you have a dentist appointment or something like that so the first time I went I was very nervous I was like I said I think I was 13 years old my grandma sent me with a ball of doily thread and a hook I left there with a skein of red heart and a much larger hook the ladies were super nice and gifted me those when I started learning and by the time I went back the next Monday I had two dishcloths and a scarf already made I took to crochet super easily so I wanted to dedicate the name of the shawl to them and those wonderful ladies at the library um, as a little bit of a tribute to them and a thank you to you know opening my eyes to this part of the needle arts so I'll show you one more time. And I had some wonderful test knitters for this. So you can go on the Ravelry page and see the other versions that have been made. Um, Dana from Dana Ray 19 on Instagram. She made a beautiful one using some speckled yarn ink. Yarn. And Laura of the Knit for Brains podcast also knitted up in a really pretty blue and white yarn. And you could see that on, I believe, on their podcast. And they might have a picture on their Instagram, but I'm not sure. So yeah, that is my newest design. And I hope you check it out on Ravelry. Just another fun way to use fingering white yarn. And that shawl can easily be knit up in a weekend. So it's a good gift knit as well. All right, my second finished object is my Sasquatch. So I made this little Sasquatch for the Truffle Shuffle on Instagram. She was having a Yeti along. She makes some adorable little Yeti stitch markers and progress keepers and she decided to host a yeti along so we all made the pattern it's just called sasquatch or yeti by fuzzy mitten you can find it on ravelry it's a paper pattern and i decided to make a little brown sasquatch and i just adore him he is my first girls really watching the sasquatch she wants him um you can't have him you have your own toys this is my toy um this is my first ever knitted toy. I've made dozens of crocheted amigurumis, but this is my first knitted toy and it was really easy. The toes were a knitted bobble stitch where were a little fiddly, but other than that, it was very, very easy. Um, first time I've ever done intarsia, there are, there is, um, Two options in the pattern. You can do the intarsia face or you can knit the face separately and stitch it on. But I really like the look of the intarsia face. And then I just used two safety eyes and embroidered a little smile. Um, I used Knit Picks Mighty Stitch. Um, but I think that's all I have to say about him. My mom, when I showed her this, she just screamed. She just thought he was the cutest thing ever. And her wish for Mother's Day or her birthday, which is coming up in July, is she wants a Yeti. So she wants it in white with blue hands and face. So I will told, I told her I will see. Hopefully I will have time. This is an easy project, but it is not a quick project by any means because each limb is knitted separately. And each limb needs to be sewn together and seamed so his arm alone took me about an hour and a half to two hours the body wasn't too bad at all the body I did in a weekend and here's the little decreases on his head so I will be making another one of these for my mother she wants to have it on her dresser by her makeup stand I don't know where I'm going to put mine yet he's just been living on my dresser I needed to keep it out of reach of Pearl because she would eat him. And he's too cute. Too cute to be eaten. So I'm going to put him. He's going to have to sit next to me because I'm going to have to guard him. 
um, my next finished project. I am taking part in Amber of Yarn Hoarders year of dishcloths. So with her dishcloth knit along, crochet along, it's basically you make one dishcloth a week and by the end of the year you will have over 50 dishcloths to gift or keep. I have made several since the last podcast, but they are all already gifted. Um, on e The time before when we went up north to visit my in-laws, my father-in-law gave me, this is the cutest story, he handed me a dishcloth and that dishcloth used to be pink and it is now basically like white and tan. It is so faded and those dishcloths were the gift that I brought when I first met my now in-laws. So my, the guy I was dating, Ray, who is now my husband for three years, um, the first time I went to his house to meet his parents and go over for dinner, I was very, very nervous and I never ever go anywhere empty handed. I never have, that's just how I was raised. We always have to bring something. So I brought a homemade cherry cheesecake and some dishcloths. I was thinking these people are probably gonna think I'm weird by bringing these, but I'm going to anyway. So a few weeks ago, my father-in-law handed me the, the white and tan now dishcloths, which were crocheted. And he said, I use these almost every day. I love them so much more than sponges. You don't throw them away, you just throw them in the wash, and I love these. Is there any way you can make us more of these? I was so touched because rarely do people ask me to make things. I love making things for people, but rarely am I asked. So I, of course, said yes, and on Easter, I brought him a set of three. So I don't have those to show you right now. I will be making more for them because I didn't, I just didn't realize that they liked them so much. So. My mom and my grandma have probably more dishcloths than you could use in a lifetime, so I will definitely be giving more to my in-laws. He also asked me if I could ever show him how to crochet dishcloths because he always sees me when we have family get-togethers or parties or anything. I am always the girl sitting in the corner drinking a cup of coffee and knitting, regardless of people karaoke or partying down. That is what I always do. That's just me. That's who I am. And he said, you always look so relaxed when you're sitting there knitting away, drinking your coffee. And I said, well, because I am, it's like my, that's, that's my little world. And I mean, have some Matchbox 20 playing and that would be like the best thing ever. But he said, you know, that looks really relaxing and blah, blah, blah. And I said, it is. And so he said he would like to learn crochet one time, you know, one day. So I'm going to put some things together and I think that that's a wonderful way to relax for anybody. Your doesn't matter your age, your gender. I think it's awesome just to sit down and crochet a dishcloth because it keeps your hands moving, it keeps your mind focused and I think it's wonderful. When I worked at the nursing home, I worked at a nursing home for over three years and I worked in uh, of course assisted living and as well as the Alzheimer's unit. And I showed a lot of people how to crochet. And I think maybe it's because I started with crochet, it's easier for me to teach somebody. Um, and I think it's a lot easier for people to grasp if they've never done any needle art because how I've always thought is one hook is a lot less intimidating than two needles. So hopefully, um, I will get my father-in-law to start crocheting with me because that would be awesome. I also really want to show my niece. She's been fiddling around with it. I gave her some yarn and hooks in a little bag and she's been fiddling around with it. Pearl just knocked the camera, so I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, I need, I mean, everybody, I would show the world how to crochet and knit. Pearl, if you could sit down, would be great. People don't want to get seasick. Okay, sorry about that. So all that to say, most of the dishcloths that I have been knitting up, I have already gifted. But I do have this set 
of, I think it's, it's sugar and cream, but I think it's Lavender Fields. Okay, now she's sitting in her bed. Um, I think the colorway is Lavender Fields. I'm not sure. It's a purple and green colorway, and I am going to a bridal shower in two weeks. Two or three weeks, and I'm going to put together a little gift bag of goodies for her, and these will be a part of it. I'm going to put a little ribbon around and maybe make a couple more. I also, their wedding is in, I want to say June or July. If I don't give her these for that, I'm thinking they're having yellow and black as their wedding colors, and I think it'd be really cool to make those colors is dishcloths. So dishcloths for all. I think I'm up to 10 for the year, but I haven't really been keeping track. It's the knit along isn't you don't have to do one per week, but that was just the goal. Um, I'm sure once it gets closer to Christmas, I'll be cranking them out a lot quicker. So the one I'm working on right now is in a really cute bag. Do what you love that I found at a little shop. And I'm almost done with this one. It is also a sugar and cream yarn. It is really pretty yellow and white variegated. This one I am going to keep because I have gifted and knitted and crocheted dozens, maybe over a hundred dishcloths, and I have one to my name. And that one was made for me by Amber of the Yarn Junkie podcast. So I need more than one. Um, this is being knit on Clover US 7 bamboo needles, which are really nice. And this was just some scrap that was in my shelf of cotton yarn. I have some really pretty variegated Hobby Lobby. I love this cotton that I'm going to be using next. So that is my next dishcloth. So my next work in progress is in a bag that I made. PSO pumpkin spice latte is good all year round. And this is a project that I am totally on the fence with if I'm going to continue it or frog it. I keep bringing it out and putting it away. I just, I just don't know. So this is the Flax Light Sweater by Tin Can Knits. And I am, oops, I am knitting the small medium. I don't have the paper with me. Small medium or medium size. And this is it so far. So I am fading my flax. Uh, looking at it again, I probably should finish it. It's just, it's gorgeous. It's just all honesty. I would have loved this if this was a cardigan because I wear cardigans every day, even in the summer because I am always cold. I'm one of those people. I love to wear shorts, but I wear a cardigan. Especially when you're grocery shopping and you're in the freezer section, it's like five degrees. So I don't care if it's middle of August, I will bring a cardigan when I go grocery shopping because it is so cold. But anyway, um, so this is the flax. I am fading three yarns. The first one is Meadow by Lemonade Shop, which is beautiful. I love the speckles. The second is just peachy i believe by bu fibers she dyed that for me custom order and if you know me you know that peach is my favorite color so that is just i am loving that the progress keeper on here is a little happy cinnamon roll from Lindsay of Simply Serving. And I am knitting this on my Chowgu 32 inch size four circulars. 
So here is the yarn. I think I used up way too much of the first yarn. This is the meadow. And that's why I only faded it with um, three changes of the yarn. I think I definitely should have changed it earlier. Oh well. And this is the BU Fibers Just Peachy, which is gorgeous. And the next one is, I just bought this on a Ravelry D stash when I first started knitting and I love brown and I love the peachy tones to this brown. I don't know the colorway, the dye or anything. It was just listed as unknown sock yarn. So I had to have it. I love the color. So pulling this out again, I should finish it because I love the colors. I just wish I would have made it as a cardigan. I started this about a year ago and it should have been done. It should have been done last summer because the plan was to wear it for this winter. But since this winter is never ending, maybe it will be finished in the time. Um, it is outgrowing its project bag and I have another one of another bag that I made over there so I'm probably just gonna stick it right in there when I'm done podcasting but this is one of my favorite fabrics I've ever had in the shop I love pumpkin spice lattes and pumpkin spice anything I'll just put this right over here So my next project that I've been giving some love to is in my gorgeous little Taylor S drawstring bag. Love this bag. It is the Bendy Air Shawl by Charlotte Bory. Every project that I've shown you so far, besides the Sasquatch and the cotton, has been with BU Fibers. And so I'm knitting this with her Stranger Things colorway and Sunshine Yarns in their Peacock colorway single space. Whew. crazy how we put things away sometimes. It's usually when I get tired I just shove it in a bag and go to bed. Alright so this is my Bendy Aero Shawl. It is pretty hard to show you. Um, it's gonna block out gorgeous but I'm on the first striping section and pretty soon I'll be all in the totally gray section with the short rows. Here, maybe you could see it that way. And I have my pizza progress keeper from my shop on there. It is a beautiful pattern. I love the yarns. I definitely want to be knitting with more single plies soon. So this has been on the back burner. I started this, I believe I started it right after Christmas. Um, it should have been done by now. It just hasn't been high on my priority list lately. It gets a few rows here and there, but I've just been working on other things and designs and gifts and other things. So that is my Bendy Aero Shawl. Hopefully that will be done soon because I'd like to have that one off the needles. My next work in progress is in the first bag I ever made myself, which is this really cute lemons bag. And so this project actually has two bags. So in this bag is 
the finished squares and in this bag is the minis. So this bag was made for me and gifted to me by the lovely Laura of the Knit for Brains Designs and the Knit for Brains podcast on Etsy. So she made me a box bag out of a Pioneer Woman placemat. I thought that was the coolest thing ever. She knows I am a huge Pioneer Woman fan. I I just love Pioneer Woman. My whole kitchen will be Pioneer Woman before long. And I just love her aesthetic. So I thought that was so sweet of her. She actually made me two of these. One of them was a makeup bag and this one is going to be for my scrappy project. So this entire thing is filled with minis and honestly just scraps because this is my teeny teeny tiny granny square blanket. So each one of these squares only takes one and a half grams. So I can use basically just a few yards to make each one of these. So these little squares are made with finger and weight sock yarn. And they are just three rounds of double crochet granny squares on a size E crochet hook. So I have been sent minis for the Get Your Yarn Wishes Granted and when I do um, swaps and things and trading some yarn remnants with friends. So this is a really fun way just to use up some of them. So what I'm going to do, here's another one. This one's actually right here in my cowl. This one, each round is different because this was literally like the tiniest of scraps. So I have a whole bag of these now. And what I'm going to do is, this is just some Deborah Norville Deep Stash Gray Fingering Yarn. So what I'm going to do is go around each square one or two more times with the gray fingering yarn. I have three of these, so I'm probably going to have to be able to look out for D-Stash. I will probably need about three more. Um, Deborah Norville, I think it's charcoal or whatever the dark gray colorway is. And I'm going to go around them and then I'm going to start attaching them. I'm going to start that soon because I feel like I'm going to have hundreds of these teeny squares, so I might as well just start doing a row or so and this blanket will be to cover our guest bed which is twin size um, which isn't a huge afghan or blanket size but when you're doing teeny teeny tiny granny squares and putting them all together it will take probably years um, but this is a really fun project I just work on these little squares every now and then when I just need a little bit of a palette cleanser So this project is also in a Laura Knit for Brains um, podcast and Etsy shop. She made me this adorable bag. I love this fabric. It is all vintage notions. Awesome handle. Love the aqua inside that matches. And this is... Um, a sneak peek of my latest pattern design. It is the fingering weight version of my Michigan Avenue wrap. So I released my Michigan Avenue wrap pattern last month or the end of February and it has gotten a wonderful response. So thank you to everyone who has purchased the Michigan Avenue wrap pattern. It is a DK weight three color wrap shawl design. So I've gotten a lot of messages, dozens of messages, to come out with a fingering weight version because a lot of people have three colors that they like of fingering weight in their stash, but I know a lot of people don't have a lot of decay in their stash. So I started working on the fingering weight version, and it is, of course, going to grow a lot with blocking. 
Um, these are all my own colorways of Sweet Tea Yarns. The peach is peaches and cream, the brown is Mama's Coffee, and the blue is Dad's Worn Denim. So it is very exciting to have this about a little over a third of the way done. I think you can see it better this way. I hope to have this released within the next couple of weeks. So my progress keeper is a little grilled cheese by the Gnome Knitter, Joanna. And I am loving the pattern. It is stretchy. I love the yarn. I love the colors. I can't wait to wear this and wrap up with this for spring and summer and all throughout the year. So this pattern again will be released within the next couple of weeks. I already have it being test knit and yeah. So that way you will be able to knit it in the DK weight or the fingering weight version, whichever you prefer. So keep a lookout on Ravelry and Instagram for when I release that pattern. In the cutest bag. I love this bag. All right. And my last work in progress I'm gonna share with you, I guess I really didn't realize how many I have, um, is, oh, I can't show that, that's the chart, oops. Um, is the Sweetest Pie cross stitch from Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. Oops, that's attached. And I'm almost done, to show you, with the pumpkin pie. I just have to do the whipped cream and the face and his little plate. And that is my little needle minder from A Needle Runs Through It. And yeah. So the Sweetest Pie Stitch Along ended two days ago. Every month a slice of pie was released. I honestly, obviously, did not do it with the stitch along. I started stitching in February. So I am way behind, but I can't wait to catch up and finish stitching all of my pies. And I'm really loving this eight o'clock, you can see. It's this really pretty oatmeal color it's just really nice because it's not just a plain white or plain cream. It's got some definition and texture to it. I zigzag stitched all the way around the eight o'clock because it was really, really fraying like crazy while I was stitching. And I'm just using this Q-Snap frame. I ordered it online. You can also get it at Hobby Lobby or Michaels. So yeah. And this is being held in my bag for my friend Cindy. So there's that. I have to update my chart because my chart is three pie slices behind. The next one I'm going to do, I think, is the cookies and cream because that one is next to the pumpkin pie. I love that pattern, it's so cute. I can't wait to finish it and frame it. I'm gonna put it in my kitchen. All right, so that is all my works in progress. Let's talk about some acquisitions. Okay, so you all know that I'm really into these enamel pins. So I've been getting quite a few and my pendant is filling up. So I have these pendants in the shop. So let me show you some of the new ones that I have. So here is from Rick and Morty Pickle Rick. This one just makes me laugh. Um, she's crafty, crafty witch. Good vibes. Anything with a jar I have to have. I just love I love jars, so I had to get this one. So good vibes. Um, oh, the kitty is upside down. 
this astrology one, and this one is hilarious. <clears throat> let me let you read it. So it's a little rude, but it's quite funny. So most of mine are crafty pins. I really would like to get a couple more Disney pins. When we went to Walt Disney World, I just got this big one. But I would like to get like Pocahontas and Mulan and a couple other ones. So yeah, this is filling up pretty quickly. I'm gonna take a sip of tea. So I did some swaps with some yarn dyeing friends of mine. So Carol of Haverland Yarns and I did a swap. I sent her some bags and she sent me some beautiful yarn that I got to pick out. So I've never tried her singles base, which I am really excited to try. Look at those beautiful colors. I'm really, really, really getting into singles. So this one is her Chesapeake Single Ply Fingering in the Gladiola colorway, which I think would go really well with like a bright pink or a green. This is just to die for, beautiful. And this one is her Butterfly Garden colorway. And I have a really big soft spot for butterflies. I always have. I have a butterfly tattoo. I am just a huge butterfly lover. And when I saw this and I saw the name, I was just so excited that we were doing a swap and I can get this. So I just, this is going to be amazing. So that is Carol of Haverland Yarns. She's on Instagram and Etsy. She is a very talented lady. And another very talented lady and a good friend of mine is Shannon from the Yarn at Home Mom. And this is her colorway, A Stone's Throw. On her basic fingering. Look at those speckles. So I think I'm going to dye up a navy colorway to put with this. This would be a beautiful shawl or a cowl or something. So thanks, Shannon. All right. So those are my regular acquisitions. So the rest of my acquisitions are from the Green Castle Fiber event. So again, a huge, huge thank you to everyone that came out to the Green Castle for the awesome fest or to see me or just to meet up with knitting friends. It was just the most fun. My booth was, it was a party house. It was so much fun to meet you lovely ladies and to have so much fun and laugh. And I just, I was on cloud nine to see all my ladies right there and so many hugs and and screams and running down the aisle to go meet them. I was just blown away. I was so touched that you guys came out to see me, to come to the fest, to support my first vending experience. It was just amazing. I have a handful of fiber friends and they are near and dear to my heart. And to actually meet them, most of them, in person was just incredible so thank you thank you thank you um i don't want to forget anyone so like i said jess from the knits and kids podcast dbkkl7 on ravelry and instagram she came really early and helped me set up and she was wearing her gorgeous sunset highway sweater and you could see on instagram i posted pictures of everybody and her sweater was amazing. I just, I wanted to rip it off of her and wear it. It was so beautiful. And everyone was stopping her and giving her compliments, as they should have. It was beautiful. So she came and helped me for the day, and she brought me a whole bag of goodies. And I'm not going to show everything, but this query fiber, query, query, I'm not really sure how you say that, 
because I've never seen it in person either. But this is a self striping colorway called Vintage Spring and she said that the colors reminded her of me because I love vintage and I remind her of spring. So thank you so much, Jess. I love this. I cannot wait to cast on some beautiful socks or hand mitts or something with this. I love the colors. And I honestly don't have a lot of self-striping, so super excited to cast this on. And she brought me minis and my very, very first tuft woolens, which I cannot wait to try. I was on her website the other day because everyone talks about tuft woolens and I've always wanted to try it. And I was on her website the other day and she only had two flavors and or scents, however you want to say it. And I was going to wait till she had an update. And then I was opening the bag of goodies that she got for me and I had this just burst of scent came to me and I was like, what's in this bag? What's in this bag? She's like, oh, I just tucked in some tough woolens. So nonchalant. I was like, oh my God, tough woolens. I was so excited. So I have a big, beautiful bar of peppermint tough woolens. It's going to make everything smell fresh and clean and happy. And I can't wait to use that. So thank you again, Jess, for spending the day with me and the yarn and the goodies and buying me kettle corn for lunch. It was just, thank you for everything. So this is Vintage Spring. I really want to cast this on because it's beautiful. She also had hand knit socks on, which it was funny. I don't think I've ever seen hand knit socks in person either, besides ones that I've made. No, it was just incredible. I saw a Sunset Highway sweater. I saw knitted socks. What? Um. So the next people to come visit me were Alicia and Laura from the Nipper Brains podcast and Melissa of the Honey Bee Knits podcast and their friend Karen. So they also brought me, each brought me a goodie bag, which was so sweet. And I was so glad I had something for everybody too because I knew they were coming. So they didn't leave empty handed either. So sweet Laura made me those three bags. She also gifted me with some absolutely gorgeous hedgehog fibers. Oh my god. I am a sucker for hedgehog fiber sock yarn. Those speckles, the beautiful aqua mint color. My hair is being ridiculous. beautiful color this is going to sit in my stash so I can look at it it is beautiful so thank you so much Laura for this hydrog fiber yarn she let's see she also brought me some treats for pearl like I said she brought me the bags Alicia made me this here's their card Alicia made me this little donut progress keeper stitch marker. She's starting to make some polymer clay stitch markers. So keep an eye on their shop because they're going to be throwing some of her little donuts and cinnamon rolls in there soon. And Laura had these specially made for me and I almost started crying because anything sentimental, I just tear up. Um, she had these little stitch markers made with my name, my husband's name, and our dog, Pearl. So I can think of them when I'm stitching along from the Crafting Treehouse. And she is on Etsy. So she does custom wooden stitch markers. So cute. So thank you, Laura. And she also gave me a whole bag of minis and my cup. I have been looking for these Starbucks mugs everywhere. When we went um, to Chicago, when we were in Indianapolis, when we were at Walt Disney World, I've been looking at thrift stores. I cannot find these mugs anywhere. And she so kindly gave me one. This is the Colorado one, which I've never been to. There's lipstick on it. So I have never been to Colorado, but I can be there in spirit with my Starbucks mom. And 
Melissa from Honeybee Knits came to visit us and she gave me a beautiful skein of her mint green yarn with some blues and pinks and this is her January Yarn of the Month Club. Uh, the colorway name is Two Proposals and is inspired by Pride and Prejudice. And there's her cute little tag. She's also on Etsy and she also has a podcast. And Danielle, who I've also been talking to for years, she came and brought her amazing friend Tamara all the way from Kentucky. So we've had we had people there from Illinois, Michigan, Ohio, and Kentucky. So exciting. And we did a mini swap. So she gave me 20 minis. And the bag even says minis for Molly. So these are from all of those gorgeous socks that she has been making. I'm going to put her Instagram handle um, on the screen so you can see this woman and her gorgeous knits. And they were so fun to hang out with. So thank you so much for driving. I believe they said it was five hours to come see me. So thank you both so much. It was so wonderful to meet you and everybody. It was a wonderful time. I met just so many people. I was blown away by how many people I met. Um, it was a wonderful event. If you live anywhere close to Greencastle, Indiana, I would highly, highly, highly recommend that you go next year. I will most likely be there vending again next year because I had so much fun and there was so many other vendors there and it was just a great event all the way around. So I cannot wait to put these in my scrappy blankets. Um, when I was there, I didn't get to do a lot of shopping because thankfully my booth was pretty busy, but when it was calming down a little bit, I did do just a teensy, teensy bit of shopping. I was already gifted with so many beautiful things that I was able to take home, so I was pretty good. I did get some funny pins, only the good dye yarn. I like big balls and I cannot lie. This one made me laugh. And this one, so funny. So I got these three pins and I also got a lavender sachet that I'm going to put with my yarn stash or my closet or something. It is just so fresh and yummy. So that's all the gorgeous things I got from Greencastle. And now I'm going to show you what will be going in the shop this week. So my shop, which is Molly Klein Design, all one word on Etsy, I usually have shop updates every Friday. I took everything out of the shop and it went with me to Green Castle for my vending event. And a little bit came back home and this will be, these items are going to be in the shop for this week. So some of the bags that I have for this week's shop update is fortune cookies, hot air balloons. A lot of these are one of a kind. So this one's one of a kind, hot air balloons, cactus, milk and cookies, butterflies, it's okay. Sock monkeys. Yarn balls with faces. I love this one. Counting some sheep. Junk food. And some of the sweater size ones are Here's a pretty floral with the gingham bottom. Another one with the gingham bottom. Oops, this one has the canvas bottom with the floral top. Floral and canvas. And floral and gingham. So those are the bags that will be in the shop on Friday. Most of those are one of a kind or some of them there are two of. I have, oops, 
some sock blinks that will be in the shop. So this one is the Rainbow Fish inspired. I have a silver and purple sparkly one. This is a new one. This is, whoops, Pikachu themed. And I have a really pretty black and pink one. So those will all be in the shop and those are of course one of a kind. Some of the yarns that are coming to the shop, this one is Robin A. Peaches and Cream. A new colorway called Reptile. And this is Banana. And this is a new colorway I just dyed yesterday and it'll be stocked in the shop on Friday and this one's called Dancing in the Moonlight. I am in love with this colorway and I will be dyeing up some extra and I'll be casting on a cardigan very soon with this colorway. So it is a beautiful light gray with some pops of yellow and black speckles. So sorry, um, my camera battery died, so I just had to take about an hour for it to charge. So I am back now. Um, but yeah, so besides those bags and yarns and sock blanks that I have shown, I will also have some Notions pouches, um, some knitting themed earrings, as well as DPN cozies in the shop this Friday. I have some Ravelry business to attend to. So we had a fast fade along, knit along, um, going on in the group from, I'm on Ravelry right now. So it went from first of the year to the end of March. And I pulled the prizes for those and put them on my Instagram stories. So any fast fade pattern that you knit, so you could have done my cowl, the fast fade socks, fast fade beanie, or fast fade mitts. Um, so I had three winners I pulled from that. So the first winner was Green W Girl Jen, which was post number 10. She won Tara Peterson's Sense and Sensibility themed shawl pattern. I believe it was the Marianne shawl. Um, for her Abby's Fast Fade Beanie. Um, winner number two was LOR903, which is Laura, post number five, the slouchy fast fade beanie. And she won the Amanda Berry pattern of choice. And Sammy Nelson91, post number 14, she entered a pair of fingerless mitts. And she won the Molly Klein Design prize pack. So everybody received their prizes already. Thank you to Tara and Amanda for donating your patterns and Thank you so much. We're going to have another cow coming up pretty soon. Um, so yeah, so thank you to everyone who entered. I have a Molly Klein Design Ravelry group and there is an Ask Me Anything thread. Um, I only have two posts in it right now. And I'm going to ask, I'm going to answer those questions because they were asked back in December. I'm going to answer those now. So if you would like to ask me anything, Ask me right in here in the chatter thread of the Ask Me Anything thread of the Molly Klein Design Railroad Group, and I will get those questions answered. I hope to do it every time I podcast. Let's see if that actually happens. Um, the first one is from Sage1029, and that is Laura. So hi. Um, she asked me a few questions. So her first question was, do you prefer pastels or primary colors? And the answer to that is pastels and neutrals always. I am a huge pastel lover. I love pastels. Second question, chocolate or no? Chocolate always, chocolate all day. I just got a big stock of clearance Easter candy, so I have all the chocolate for a while. I have a chocolate and coffee cabinet. Yes. So yes, to chocolate, favorite season, Spring and summer, spring if it ever gets here, and I love relaxing on those hot, daisy, hazy days of summer, going to the beach or the water park or grilling outside. Coffee or tea? Um, at least a pot or a pot and a half of coffee a day. And yes, I do love tea. I love iced tea too. 
So thank you, Laura, for your questions. And my sweet friend Pam Nitsy Girly asked, I know you were first to crochet when you were younger. What was your first project and do you still have it? So I mentioned I did make um, some dishcloths and a scarf as my first projects. Uh, my very, very, very first thing that I ever made was I was just going back and forth and I kept missing the last single crochet because I was going into the chain stitch of the row before and I turned it into a Barbie skirt. Um, out of Red Heart yarn. I do not have any of the crochet items I've ever made except this shawl. I've made I would guess 400 to 500 crocheted items so far. Probably a lot more than that. I've made at least over 100 afghans. I used to do afghans and amigurumis and beanies uh, on commission um, all throughout high school and beyond. I don't have any of those of course and I gift a ton of crocheted items. I think that is a great gift item, a great charity item. So if you are knitting for charity or crocheting for charity, that is crochet is the way to go. It's really quick. So no, I honestly don't have anything I've ever crocheted, which is pretty sad. I'm starting to keep some of my knitted items. I just never kept anything before. I always, I'm a giver, so I was always giving. Um, everything. Um, other than that, chatter. I don't think I have really anything to chat about. I have a lot of work to do um, in the shop. I would like to work on my quilt this week. Um, my husband is a musician as well as working his day job and he will be having a concert downtown in a couple weeks so he's really excited and he's been practicing a lot for that something has been on my mind a lot lately and everyone thinks I'm crazy but something that's been on my mind is a drum set so my husband is an amazing musician an amazing songwriter and I'm not just saying that because I'm married to him but he just writes such beautiful music and he's a great singer and he um, plays guitar and he has five guitars now I think he just got another one and he's just an amazing musician and he has some friends that are bass players but he no longer has a drummer he used to have a band in college and of course now they're almost 30 and there is no college band anymore but all that put aside I've always wanted myself I've always wanted to learn how to drum and I think that might be a possibility this summer to get a drum set and teach myself because my husband is an incredible guitar player and he taught himself completely from YouTube. So I think if he can do that, I definitely can. I'm not a person that I don't really want to go take lessons. Uh, truth to be told, there is a music store downtown and the guy was really creepy. So I really don't want to sit with him and drum next to him for an hour at a time at our lessons. So I would rather learn myself at home. Um, a huge inspiration to me my entire life has been Karen Carpenter. I think she was an amazing, beautiful person, musician, singer, all around beautiful person, great heart. and. To be able to be a female drummer such as her would be incredible. I used to sing a lot when I was in school. Before I was homeschooled, I was in a lot of plays and um, in a lot of musicals and I sing a lot. And now I only sing at karaoke. I'm not really, I'm not a spotlight person, but I think behind a set of drums would be a great place because I could play and be heard and not really be seen. I'm not one for the spotlight, so um, the dream goal would one day play a show with my husband and I and our friend Nick, the bass player, and I would be way in the back and nobody would see me and that would be great. Uh, I would let them have the spotlight. I just want to drum the day away. Um, so that is definitely a possibility soon. I know I'm crazy. I mean, that sounds insane, but 
I'm excited about the possibility of learning something new. I always need to be learning something new. And this year it's brioche and drumming. So that is on my agenda soon. I need to look into drum sets and brands that are good. It doesn't have to be amazing. I don't need like a $5,000 drum set or drum kit, I guess. Um, I just need something that will sound decent if I'm doing the right things. And we can play together or I can play by myself. I just need to learn. Um, so yeah, that is crazy, but it is fun. And no one should be surprised that I want to do another crazy thing because that's just who I am. I go from one craziness to the next. Um, so I will let you know how the whole drumming thing is going. My camera has died for the third time, so I think that is a good sign that I need to go straighten up my sewing room and get some things done around the house. I have some stuffed peppers in the slow cooker and another pot of coffee going, and it's going to be a good rest of the day. So before I sign off, I just want to let everybody know that the Sweet Tea Yarns 2018 Advent Calendars are in the shop now. Um, there is a limited quantity. And thank you again, anyone that joined in on the Advent Calendars last year. They were a wonderful success. Everyone was very happy with them. And I have a lot of wonderful ideas for the Advent Calendars this coming Christmas season. So go into my Molly Klein Design Etsy shop. We have the signups available and you receive with the Sweet Tea Yarns Advent Calendar 24 10 gram minis, each individually wrapped hand dyed yarn and one 100 gram full skein of fingering sock yarn in an exclusive colorway only to the Advent Calendar. Um, like I said, a limited availability, a lot of extra prizes and notions and treats are included in almost every day's little individually wrapped package. So come join us this year for Advent. Also, we have the Yarn Club of April, May, and June Nickelodeon 1990s Nicktoons. Signups are still available. There are very few spots left, so join in on that too. April, May, and June, you will receive a package for each month themed after a Nicktoons favorite. All right, thank you everyone so much for watching and I hope you have a very nitty and wonderful week. Let's hope we start warming up and enjoying the springtime. You can follow me on Instagram as at Molly Klein Design. Be sure to check out my Etsy shop and become part of the Molly Klein Design Rapper group. Thank you again and have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye.